Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we're talking about another new collaboration between ColourPop and the Disney Designer Collection. This is round three of their collaborations and this one is called Midnight Masquerade. There are eight total princesses that are showcased in this collection. Three are princesses that we've seen before. So Cinderella, Tiana, and Belle are making a comeback yet again. And now we have five new faces joining in this collaboration. We have Giselle from the movie Enchanted, Rapunzel from Tangled, we have Aurora from Sleeping Beauty, Esmeralda from The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and we also have Megara from Hercules. I love the movie Hercules. It's so underrated as far as Disney movies go, so I'm excited to see Meg making an appearance here. I know a lot of people have been wanting to see Mulan. I do wish that Mulan was included in here. Mulan is another one of my favorite Disney princesses. She's more like a Disney warrior, okay? So if they do a round four, I really hope that they include Mulan. However, I have a feeling that since there's about to be a live action remake of Mulan, Disney's probably like guarding the Mulan image a little bit. I, that's just a theory on my part, I don't know, but that's just my guess. This collection includes another 15 pan palette, there are also eight cheek colors, so four highlighters and four blushes, and there are eight new liquid lips. This is a brand new formula. It's called the Lux Liquid Lip. So we have a lot of pieces to get through. I'm gonna swatch everything for you. We're gonna do demos, tutorials, the whole nine. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start by talking about these bundles. Each one of the eight princesses featured in the Midnight Masquerade collection will have a bundle that comes with both a cheek and a lip product. So the bundles are priced at $18 each. Not really saving anything there because the compacts sold individually are $10 and the lips sold individually are eight. But I do like this little box, even though you're not really technically saving any money. I do like the idea of these bundles. They have this beautiful artwork both on the front panel as well as inside the box when you open up. As we go through all the swatches of the individual products, it'll be pretty obvious which pieces go into which bundle, but I will just point everything out for you as we go along as well. Each cheek compact features one of the princesses. These are a heavy duty cardboard with a magnetic closure and all of the compacts have a little mirror in here. I really like this packaging. I like that they have a different shape. The artwork, of course, is just beautiful, the Disney designer artwork. All of the compacts are available individually. These will be sold for 10 US dollars a piece, but each one will be featured in one of the bundles as well. This is from the Megara bundle, and it's called Big Tough Girl. This is one of the highlighters and it is a shifting lavender, really cool color. Next we have Cinderella. This is a classic pale champagne highlighter. I am wearing this today and it is gorgeous. This is the Aurora Compact. It's called Coronation. And this is a really cool like duochrome, pinky, peachy gold highlighter. It's a really cool one. I actually wore this as a blush topper today. And we have the Giselle Compact. This one's called Andalazia. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I actually haven't seen Enchanted yet. Ooh, sorry. This is a kind of deeper, almost bronzy pink highlight. Really, really pretty. Now moving into the blush compacts, we have Belle. This one's called Enchanted Mirror. This is like a soft baby pink meets rosy kind of color. Perfect Belle color. This is the Rapunzel Compact. It's called Floating Lights. This is a more blue-based baby pink blush. Next up, we have the Esmeralda Compact. This one's called Court of Miracles. This is a bright, satiny kind of coral. This is gonna be the kind of color that works on a lot of different skin tones. Really, really universally flattering type of blush color. And last but not least, my favorite of the blush shades. This is the Tiana Compact. It's called Kiss in a Frog. This is a medium, dusty, mauve kind of shade. 
really, really pretty. I'm gonna show you a quick swatch now of all eight of those cheek shades next to each other. That way you can just see what they look like applied to the skin and see them all compared to one another. Next, let's talk about this new liquid lip formula. This is the Lux liquid lip. I'm having a really hard time describing this. It sort of reminds me of the NYX soft matte lip creams in that it has that like really light, kind of airy, almost like fluffy feeling on the lips. I know that sounds weird, but it starts out more liquidy. It's almost as if it was a one of those lip stains, you know what I mean? Like an ultra blotted lip mixed with a soft matte lip cream. It's very, very light. It feels super comfortable on the lips. It doesn't completely dry down, but I think that's part of the reason why it's so comfortable. It's not a super matte feeling. It has a matte finish. It does dry down, but it doesn't dry down to be a completely matte, completely transfer proof type of finish. I've been wearing this lip for probably two hours now, so let's just see how much is left on there and how much it transfers. See, there's a little bit of transfer here. There's still some left on my lips too. I have been testing this formula out for a while and it layers really nicely on top of itself. So if you do want to touch up, you're going to need to touch up since it's not transfer proof. It doesn't get like cakey and crumbly as you layer it up. It is a really interesting formula. It's not perfectly opaque, but there's definitely enough color there. I do get a little bit of staining with some of the deeper shades, the reds and the like really dark purpley shade. Here's a close up of the Lux liquid lip packaging. Has this cool special packaging, looks kind of like a night sky. It's a short little chubby component. Just for comparison sake, this is the Lux liquid lip next to one of their standard components. This is one of the ultra glossy lips. You can see this is short and chubby and very cute. Don't let the shortness of the component fool you. The Lux Liquid Lip actually has a ton of product in there. It has 4.75 grams of product and the Ultra Glossy Lip that I have here only has three grams of product. So you're getting a lot in this little tube. The applicator is a super skinny slanted doe foot and this is not a flexible doe foot. It's quite stiff. It does make precision application very, very easy. I'm gonna go ahead and show you lip swatches of all eight of these colors and I'll tell you which princess bundle each one goes in as we go along. I also wanna show you a swatch on my arm of all eight of these shades side by side. That way it'll make it a little easier to compare them. Sometimes when you're looking at one lip swatch and then the next, it's hard to tell what the differences and similarities are. So here they all are side by side, just swatched onto my arm. Okay, last but not least, Let's talk about the eyeshadow palette. This is the Midnight Masquerade palette. This palette has a super cool shape, just like the little compacts. A little octagon shape here. It kind of reminds me of like a cut jewel. Very princessy. I like it. I like that they did something different. It's still the heavy duty cardboard. It still has a magnetic closure. Here's the front of the palette. They saved all of the pizzazz for the inside of the palette because when you open up, you see this super cool artwork with all of the princesses inside. I wish that this artwork was on the outside and then there was a mirror in here. I know adding a mirror makes it more expensive. I'm sure with the shape, it would be complicated, but 
you know, a girl can dream. A dream is a wish your heart makes. On the back, we just see all the shade names pictured. I want to point out that none of the shades on the back of my palette have any eye safety warnings. I'm really hoping that that's because this was sort of towards the beginning of production. This was sent out to me quite a few weeks ago, so I'm hoping that they've since corrected this because there's no eye safety warnings whatsoever on the back of my palette. However, there is on the back of the box, I know it's a little bit hard to tell, see that little tiny star there? So Gaston, Royal Ball, and Floating Lanterns all have eye safety warnings. If you look at this teeny teeny tiny text right here, it says not intended for use in the eye area. I really hope that this is due to the fact that my palette was made so early on. You know, this is more of a press sample, so I'm hoping that they rectify that because people don't really tend to hang on to their boxes. You're definitely not referencing the box of your palette every time you use your palette. And even the warning that's on here is so tiny with these little teeny tiny stars and they kind of blend in with the background and the warning is printed so so small down there. Um, that just makes me uncomfortable. I'm not really happy with that, especially considering how many people are gonna be buying this that are probably very young or possibly even like small children because this is Disney princesses, right? So please, please, if you're watching this, if you buy this for a kid in your life, just be aware that these three shades, clearly two of them are pressed glitters, which are never, ever, ever eye safe. Never eye safe. I don't care how much glitter glue you use. I don't care if you have never had an issue in your life. They're not eye safe. They're not. And I will continue to be adamant about this because it's my job to inform you and I genuinely care about your health. I care about your well-being. I care about your eyes. Trust me, you don't want a corneal abrasion. No glitter is that cute. These are not eye safe. I don't care if you've worn glitter a hundred times. How many times have you been in your car? You still wear your seatbelt every time, don't you? All right, I'm done harping on that. Gaston is also marked as not eye safe because of the red pigment. You can patch test for pigment sensitivities. You cannot patch test for glitter. So please, please, if you have kids, be aware. Don't put tiny shards of plastic near their eyeballs. That is what glitter is. The For the red shade, just patch test on the inside of the arm. A small swipe of that pigment. Leave it on there for a while, see if there's any reaction, any red bumps. Most people, the worst that will happen is staining, but you can test. I know you guys are so sick of hearing me talk about eye safety. I'm sorry. Let's just talk about the palette now, but you need to know. The Midnight Masquerade palette will be priced at 22 US dollars. It does contain 15 shades. Let's take a look at these shades now. We do have two of the dreaded pressed glitter. There are five shimmer shades in here. The two on the top row are duochromes and then the three in the middle row are just straight metallics. And the entire bottom row is matte and the center of the top row is matte. So lots of mattes in here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you swatches of this palette now. As usual, I will be doing both finger and brush swatches on the inside of my arm with no primer down first, just the shadows straight onto my arm. I won't be doing brush swatches of the pressed glitters. Those are just gonna be straight finger swatches. Those don't really apply well with a brush and I don't recommend that you apply them at all ever. The finger swatches will be on top and then each brush swatch will be below. As always, I'll be using my e.l.f. flat eyeshadow brush for the brush swatches and cleaning off in between each shade using my Vera Mona color switch. That way there's no transfer between swatches. Let's go ahead and take a look at those swatches now. Here are the swatches of the Midnight Masquerade palette and I have to say I'm very impressed by the brush swatches here. Some of the brush swatches look just as good, if not better. So I really do think that all of these formulas across the board, except for those glitters, of course, perform really, really well with both finger and brush application. We are getting a lot of good mattes here. And I just wanted to give you a close up of all these shades, just so you can really see what they look like applied to the skin and how. 
I also wanted to show you some comparisons with the previous Disney palettes. I know a lot of people have been wanting to see these compared. There are quite a few similar neutral, particularly the matte shades from It's a Princess thing. So I wanted to show you this and I also wanted to compare to the Misunderstood palette. I think there are less similarities here, but we are seeing a few things like a matte blue, a really shimmery bronze, and the greens are definitely different, but we are getting some greens in here too. So I just wanted you to see those compared. Now that you've seen all the shades swatched, let's go ahead and take a look at a quick tutorial using some of these products from the Midnight Masquerade collection, including the palette. Of course, I did this very Disney princess eye look, and then I'll wrap up all my thoughts on this collection at the end. Let's start with the cheeks. I'm gonna begin with my favorite blush. It's the Tiana blush called Kiss in a Frog. I just love the way this looks on my cheeks. So there is a little bit of blush. Next, we need highlight. This is the Cinderella bundle highlight. It's called Horse and Carriage. I'm gonna apply that to the tops of my cheekbones and this is just a beautiful, soft champagne white glow. I think it looks gorgeous. This is definitely gonna be a go-to cheek combo for me, but you know we have to be extra. Let's add a little blush topper. This is the shade called Coronation. I'm just sweeping that all over for a little extra shine. You know, why not? It's Disney, we'll go for some extra shine. Now let's get started on the eye look. I'm gonna start by priming my eyes with my favorite eye base. It's the MAC Paint Pot in the shade Painterly. Then I'm gonna set that base using a little bit of my MAC Next to Nothing pressed powder. We're going in with the shade Damsel. I wanted to do a soft, romantic, like pinky purple, very princessy eye. And this soft mauvey pink shade definitely caught my eye. So I'm using that as my transition shade in the crease. For my lower lash line, I wanted to go a little bit warmer. So I'm grabbing this matte orangey brown called Pip. Then to start to build up some color and some depth, I'm taking the shade New Dream on a small fluffy brush for the outer part of my eye. And then I'm using this really pretty white to pink duochrome called Spinning Wheel applied with my finger all over the inner half of my lid and around the inner corner. I took Quasimodo on a small pencil brush and just used that like a faux liner. Then I curled my lashes, added some L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara. That's my finished look. I really wanted to keep it very simple, very soft and romantic and princessy. I think a lot of people who are going to buy this palette are going to be looking for looks like this. And I really like the way it turned out. I think it's just romantic and pretty and girly and princessy. Overall, I'm not mad at this palette. I don't hate it. I just don't love it. I want to love it. If it didn't have the two pressed glitters in it, I'd probably be a lot more inclined to like it. I love that they did the duochromes. I think this green shade called Frog and Wife is really special. It's very, very beautiful. It's cool that there are more mattes in this one. The last palette from the Villains Collection, the Misunderstood palette, didn't have a whole lot of mattes. So if you were missing those matte shades, here they are. This palette really does remind me of a mixture between the other two Disney palettes, the Princess it's a princess thing and misunderstood. If you mixed those together and added some glitter, it would be this. The color scheme is just okay for me, but in all honesty, as far as this collection goes, the palette's actually my least favorite thing. And I know those of you who watch a lot of my ColourPop videos are probably gonna be pretty surprised because I don't say that very often. Usually I always love the palette the most. And like I said, I'm don't hate it. I don't think it's terrible quality. It's just, it's just not quite doing it for me. I do, however, think that the cheeks and lips in this collection are really beautiful. I do think those are the top winners for me. I really think the bundles are the coolest thing in this collection. Personally, I would go with either the Belle bundle or the Tiana bundle. I just like the shades in there. Belle's definitely my favorite princess, and I've liked 
all of the Belle Beauty and the Beast things that they've done so far and they just continue to keeping my favorites. I will say that as far as the cheek products go, the Cinderella, the highlighter called Horse and Carriage and the Tiana blush that's called Kiss and a Frog, these are my two absolute top favorites. I'm gonna keep wearing these. I am going to keep rocking these. Shade-wise, these two are my favorites. And when it comes to the lips, my top two favorites are Beast and Wonder Boy from the Meg bundle. These are just the kind of shades I really like to wear. I think all the shades are quite wearable. Overall, for both the cheeks and the lips, they did a great job of making a wide variety things that are going to suit lots of different skin tones, lots of different styles, but they also stayed pretty true to the inspiration, the princesses that inspired those colors. The packaging across the board is beautiful. Wanted to love the palette, didn't really love it. Maybe you love it and that's great. It is a pretty decent midway point if the princess thing palette was too neutral and the misunderstood palette was like too shimmery or too colorful. This is a good in between and I do think it's going to work for a lot of people. Personally, I still prefer my misunderstood palette, but yeah, the lips and cheeks are where it's at for me with this collection. I would love to hear what you guys think about the Midnight Masquerade collection. Are any of these things on your list? Are you excited to see the new princesses? Who else do you want to see added in if they do future collections? I always love to hear what you guys think, so make sure you leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Who? I don't, I haven't even seen some of these movies. I'm sorry, I'm old, okay? From her, her, her. dang it. Oh, that one got away from me. I will be doing comparisons on my Insta stories. Go and check it out. Makeup just for fun. I don't know why I said it like that, but here we are. Okay, sorry about that. Rant over, rant over. I just, <laughs> oh man. Woo, I was so focused on my eye safety rant. I don't know if I even told you the price. If you ask me, it really only contains 13 because those glitters are unusable. <laughs> all tea, all shade. <laughs> Come on, Colourpop, stop. Stop, you know kids are gonna be using this on their eyes. It's not cool. Okay, I'm gonna take a breather. Anyway. <laughs> Whew, I need to calm down. I get so like worked up when I talk about glitter. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine. You would think Disney princesses would wear glitter, but when you look at them, they're like barely wearing any makeup. Like this is a very, actual Disney princess eye look because they don't wear that much makeup. They're like the original Visco girls. <laughs> Can I photoshop a picture of a Disney princess with a hydro flask <laughs> as grungy? <laughs> wow. Okay, moving on. I apologize. <laughs> Disney, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, this really is very comfortable. All the lip colors are named after the like love interest which is fine, but I am sad that there's a shade called Gaston. Gaston's like my least favorite. I mean, I uh, I just can't with Gaston. He is the villain of Beauty and the Beast. I know people get it twisted. They think Beast is the villain. They think the witch is the villain. No, Gaston's the villain. That guy, that freaking guy. Mm -mm. <sighs> All right, well, now that we've established that I'm a 34-year-old that gets upset by Disney villains who are misogynists and also press glitter, it's probably time for me to go. Okay, bye.